Hey y'all, it's Fix It With Fran where I talk about all things faith, family, food, and fun. I apologize, I'm dealing with a case of laryngitis right now, but I wanted to get this video out to y'all. Here are some of my tips for the things that I do my first hour whenever I'm on board any of um, my cruise trips. So first and foremost, I would always recommend getting one of the drink of the day specials. And this one I think is the fun ship. But whenever you get on board, if you're a person like me that doesn't get the drink plan, whenever the guys are walking around or ladies that have the different drinks on a tray, you can always ask the servers what the drink of the day is. And usually you may get a dollar or two off a drink. But if you're somebody again, who's not going to get the drink plan, who wants to enjoy some drinks throughout the cruise, it's a good way to save a little bit and get something different every day so we are seated now just got some guys burgers this time I got the ringer which has an onion ring on it I've already sanitized my hands I got some extra tomatoes and onions because I'm a tomato and onion eating girl I started to ask for some more fries but I said no pace yourself friend <coughs> we come on board with our little tumbler cups and straws this is my Turvis tumbler it's very nautical, so it makes me happy. And it's pink and green. Skiwi, my sores. And with this one, again, bringing the straws on board because if you don't know, Carnival now uses sugar straws. It's supposed to be better for the environment and to eliminate waste, but those straws dissolve very quickly. We bought on our own drink, so this is that Coke Zero y'all saw. And I always also clip on some hand sanitizer. So this is one that I have from Bath and Body Works with one of their little blinged out holders because y'all know I like my bling. And then this is the duck keychain that I got on my last cruise. So we're sitting here, the ship has not left yet. So that's another thing to know if you didn't know is that when you get on board, all of the um, main restaurants are open like the Blue Iguana, um, the, what is it? I think it's a burrito place. And then there's Guy's Burgers and then kind of the main buffet area will be open. So you can come to your room, drop your stuff and then go around the boat and get something to eat. So even though we have not left the port yet, we're about to eat some food. Going through the process right now, my tradition, what I have learned, first night is always go find your table assignment in your dining room. That way, you see where you're supposed to be seated. If you don't like that seating, or if you want like a private tabletop like I will be requesting, you at least know where they've initially placed you so that you can go to the maitre d' to ask for a private table. So that's what we're doing. The table we were assigned is 310. Because we're a party of two, I figured it was going to be a larger group table. That's 370, 310. So this is a table that Brandon and I would have been assigned. We're going to the steakhouse tonight, so it doesn't matter. But 310 and your card will tell you your table assignment. So I'll include a screenshot of that. But yeah, come in. Come in that first night, our first day. Because right now it is... 238 the ship hasn't even left yet but just came in to look through the dining room and this is the washington dining room level three aft in the back of the ship i'm walking all around so you can also see the window but once you do that again you know where your seat assignment is and if you want to request something different or another placement you can do that so what we'll end up requesting is a two top like this or like that hopefully one with the booth I'll let them know my preference is also for a booth and then see where we get assigned. What may very well happen is that they'll tell you that if nothing is available during your dinner time, which are the 6 p.m., that they might have to move us to, I don't know, 7, 7, 15, whatever the other time is for seating. So that's how it goes. And this is the Washington dining room. Let me do this slowly so y'all can see. There's an upstairs and downstairs. There's two levels of seating on this dining room. And there's Brandon waiting so patiently for me. All right, I'm out. Brandon. Brandon, you gonna say hi? Like with Monica. Hi. Hello. So when the doors are closed like this, Usually can still open them, though it looks like you can. Isn't that so cute? 
<laughs> and then my else turned 80. Cute, cute. Back at the room. So when it comes to getting my room set up, one of the first things that I do is take out my Lysol wipes, Lysol spray, get all the surfaces and everything wiped down, sprayed down, and cleaned off. Before COVID, even I always brought these type of wipes so that I could wipe off the phone and the remote in the room, two primary areas. In the day and time of COVID, now I wipe everything down. And I usually have, there is in my checked luggage, it hasn't come yet, but a larger pack of Lysol, like the kind of regular, um, it's still this plastic case, but this is like the travel to go that I keep in my carry-on bag. And then I have a larger, it's like maybe like three inches thick pack that I'll show y'all. But I come in, wipe everything down, wipe down the bathroom, and then start to get settled. The other thing that I do is these magnetic hooks. If you didn't know, the walls inside of these cabins are metal. So when you take a magnet, it will stick like this and then you can hang little things right here like your hats um, this one is strong enough to hold even a purse I have some larger magnets that will also hold purses and um, you can put your little lanyards things like that that you want right here at the door now with COVID I hang my mask by the door so I'll show y'all that in a second so yeah this is easy to just hang up your card hang up a mask that way if somebody comes to the door or if it's room service you have it right here you can grab it and it keeps it in your line of sight so that you don't leave this when you go and out of the knock on the door was our luggage our luggage just came so we're gonna move that in i wanted to show this to y'all and again i apologize for not having a voice but i got this travel um, air purifier to review it's actually something that's designed for use in the car but because the state rooms are so small in the um cabins i felt like this would be great to have in our room and yeah i told y'all before i kind of travel and prepare like a girl scout so i tell my husband worst come to worst if there is a covid outbreak we'll at least have something to treat the air in our room i really loved how small and compact this was it's about the size of a soda can as you see here and it was powered with a um micro usb so it was good to go so y'all these are just a few of my tips of things that I do when we get on board by no means is this an exhausted lift there's a lot of other things you could do and by no means is this anything that you have to do you might want to just get on board get some food and not worry about walking around and doing business logistics but again just trying to be helpful and share some things that I have learned as a part of my cruising experience over the last 10 years and next time I'll talk about how the self-mustering process went now with COVID protocol you get on board and you kind of do the mustering yourself and then go check in at your mustering station so if you want to know more about that please do like and subscribe and make sure you hit the notification bell so you get the next video